The faith, grace, love connection is righteousness. Well, howdy folks, this is Stephen Detweiler, and it is Tuesday, 423-24. It is Passover. The day the final sacrifice is given for all eternity. This is when it happened. Um, I did, of course, I celebrated Resurrection Day when the whole church and the whole world celebrated the Easter, Resurrection Day. Um, but I saved this for this time because this is more accurate. And so I'm going to honor the seven times Jesus shed his blood, and I'm going to honor the blood covenant at the time that he made the blood covenant because he made it on a feast day. God has particular feast days and there's a reason why he did that and that's a whole teaching in itself and we're not going to go there because we're looking at the seven times Jesus shed his blood and the proper teaching behind that. Jesus shed his blood seven times this day. He did it in the power of the will of God for his destiny and our destiny. We see in Scripture exactly what happened and the order of which it happened. Today I'm going to confront a false teaching about the seven times Jesus shed his blood. When you take away one thing and add another, it becomes a false teaching, whether it be on purpose or by accident. If you break out of the pattern, the process, the progression given, then you change the message and the power that God intended for you to receive, have, and be empowered by. The blood covenant is something we need to be very specific on. We must be very specific on our blood covenant. In the many years that I've taught on this, I've given the scriptures that, that apply to each time this goes, I think, yeah, I think you can pretty, pretty much go back to year by year by year because I've, I've either taught on all seven or I have taught on specific ones, but the corresponding scriptures are there. Um, so if you need to look at that, go ahead and go back through the YouTube uh, and you should find those. I saw a post recently in a prophetic life group that I belong to on Facebook, an actual teaching that I have seen before over the years but never had the platform to really address it. And now I'm on this platform and I, ha and I can address it because I don't want you to walk in a deception or I don't want you to not have a complete understanding of the covenant and what Jesus did for us, when he did it, and why these things took place. Um, there's an empowerment in each time he shed his blood. This person inserts internal bleeding as one of the seven which omits and breaks the events and the pattern and power of the progression of the perfect order that lines up perfectly with God's numbers in Scripture. Remember, we run, we've been running everything by the numbers. We already have the whipping post. But he adds internal bleeding as one of the seven, omitting the second time Jesus actually shed his blood. Does the scripture mention in, in, internal bleeding as a separate event, as part of the progression? No. This is man's evaluation of the result of the whipping post. It is not a separate event. It has to be the separate events. And by placing that there, he omits the actual second time Jesus shed his blood. And this is a really big deal of omission. And with this omission, makes it a significant false teaching. I've been studying this topic and teaching this topic since the year 2000. So 24 years. I have been meditating on the seven times Jesus shed his blood for me and the power and the completeness of my blood covenant in him. We are going to address and see why this false teaching is so significant to address. This is the decade of the pay, the mouth, 
Think about this. This is the decade of the pay, the mouth. And the first thing that happened as we entered into this decade of the pay, the mouth, was a pandemic where the whole world had to cover their mouths with masks and free speech about what was happening was hindered. It was hindering the mouth, covering the mouth. So now we have a false teaching of the seven times Jesus shed his blood, omitting the second time he shed his blood for you and I, and that is important. For the second time Jesus shed his blood was when he was brought before the Pharisees and they tore out his beard. They tore out his beard, bleeding from his face, from his mouth. In the decade of the pay, This person omits the mouth. Think about that. In this teaching, this person omits the very shedding of blood in the face, by the mouth, on the beard. Isaiah 50, verse 6. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheek to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. The beard is very significant in the Levitical law and ancient Hebrew tradition. Why is this so significant? And why is it the second time in God's order of his progression of the shed blood? Well, we're going to answer that tomorrow. And we're going to actually, we're going to answer it. Um, so it's going to be Wednesday, Thursday. And Friday, I did not know I was going to go into this, this that deep, but it was like really laid on my heart to make sure I, I give a complete response to this, so we have a complete understanding of why we need to steer away from that. You know, the man's heart might be good. I don't. I'm not mentioning who it is. All I know is I need to say to y'all. That is not in order. Our God is a God of order. That is not done by the numbers. God does everything by the numbers. He's the one that created numbers. And he does patterns. He does cycles. He does seasons. All right? So it was very important for me to address this thing, this this topic of the second time Jesus shed his blood and show you why it's so important and show you why that is a false teaching and to steer clear of that so that way you get the fullness of your shed blood covenant and that's my heart i love you god bless you and i'll see you next time